Hello and welcome to our review for our points, lines, planes, and segments quiz. Um, I'm going to go over the answers to the quiz, so make sure you take a look at this, especially uh, if you had some questions that you did the quiz and you weren't sure um, why you got it wrong or you're just a little stuck. Um, so first things first that I want to talk about because I have a feeling that for at least one of these questions uh, we had an issue with it due to a um, forget or lack of reading directions. Uh, so the first thing here it says use this image to answer questions one through six. So you're going to use this same picture for questions one, two, three, four, five, and six. Most of us did it for one through five, but then when we got to question six, there was either no answer or you guys drew a picture that had nothing to do with this. Um, so what I did to make going over this review a little easier is I copied and pasted this picture and I put it next to these so that when I talk about it, you can uh, take a look at what this is. So first thing we're gonna do here is question one says, name the intersection of planes M and N. So what we want to do is we want to talk about where do planes M and N intersect. You'll notice, so plane M, this is plane N, because there's the N right here, and plane M, M is right here. They intersect at this line because this is where they meet. This line has two names. So you'll see here, this line has this L. It also has these points A and B. So this line is where planes M and N intersect. So our options are line, a, B, line, B, A. So that's if you use the points. Remember, you can't mix points and script. And then line, L. Uh, for this one, because you can't change the font in your uh, answer here, I accepted whether you did the lowercase or the capital L. Uh, technically, for the script for lines, it's always lowercase script, so it would be a lowercase l if you were going to do it that way. Just remember, two points make a line, so if you're going to name it using a point, you need to do two points. You can't mix points and script. All right, next is our points A, B, and D co-linear. So remember, the word line is in here. So co-linear means are they on the same line? So here's the line where A and B are. So is there a way for me to draw a straight line that connects A, B, and D, there is not because A and B are up here. I can connect A and D, I can connect B and D, but I cannot connect A, B, and D all together. So A, B, and D are not collinear. And then the basic answer for this is they don't lie on the same line or they aren't on the same line. So for this question, there's two points. There's one point for saying the correct yes or no, which is no, and then there's one point for giving the correct explanation. Question three, give another name for line L. Technically, we already talked about that a little bit. Line L, that's right here. It's this line. So for this one, you specifically have to use a and B for this. So the only options for this one is we would have to 
call it line AB or line BA. Those are the only two, two points they give us that are on line L, so we have to use those two points to do it. Question four, give another name for plane M. So plane M is this plane here. They used M, so you can't use M as part of your name because they said give another name for plane M. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what other things are on plane M that we can use. Well, A and B are on plane M because they're part of that intersection line. And the point D is also on plane M. So we have three points on this plane that you can use to name it. So we have three points and you can do A, B, D, B, D, A. Uh, there's a lot of options for orders here. D, A, B, B, A, D. Any combination of these three letters and then the word plane, because you have to indicate that you're talking about a plane. And the reason we do that is because these three points are on that plane, so you can use those three points to indicate that plane that you're talking about. Question five, are points A, B, D, and F coplanar? Planar, plane is in this word, so are they on the same plane? So if you look at this, a, B, and D, those are all on plane M. A, B, and F, those are all on plane N. So A, B, and D are coplanar. A, B, and F are coplanar. But because F and D are not on the same plane, all four of those points are not coplanar because they're asking you if all four of those points are on the same plane. So the answer for five is no, because D and F are on different planes, or D and F are not on the same plane, or D is on plane M and F is on plane N. So once again, this is two points. This is one for saying no, and one point for giving the correct explanation as to why. Question six is a file upload. So there's a couple ways you could have done this. Um, uh, you could have taken a screenshot and drawn over this image. Uh, you could have tried to freehand draw this image again and then draw it by hand. Um, but once again, question six, Right at the beginning of the quit, the review, it says use this picture for one through six. So draw a lining line containing points F and A. So all you want to do here is you're going to connect points F and A. There's a line that contains F and A because they're connected. Here's line L. Intersect is where when a line or a line and a plane or a line and or two planes where they cross each other, where they end up like intersecting with each other. We've talked about intersect in algebra before. What point do the line we draw and line L, the one I drew in blue, where do they intersect at? They both have point A in common. They intersect at point A. So your answer for this is uh, one, the drawing here. So you would need that red line that I drew. And then where does it intersect? So you could have either circled it like I did here. You could say just on the side of your drawing, just write point A to indicate that's their intersection. 
but just as like an addition, this question, it says at the beginning, use the image for questions one through six. So you were supposed to use this image to do this question. All right. Question seven. A lot of us did pretty good on this. I saw somewhere we just kind of forgot like which things we should combine. And I think this is where drawing out your picture really helps. So find the value of X and ST if R is between ST. So that means S and T, actually this is line segment stuff. So we have a line segment with S and T, and R is between them. That means R is somewhere here in the middle. So it's S, R, T. And they tell us that S, R is 3X, R, T is 2X minus 1, S, T, the whole thing, Sorry, 2x plus 1. Somebody made that mistake in their review. And I was thinking about that while I was talking about this. Is 6x minus 1. So that means sr plus rt gives us st. So when we do this, we want to do 3x plus 2x plus 1 equals... 6x minus 1. 3x plus 2x is 5x. Right? And I'm going to solve this the way that makes it fastest instead of the way that I usually show you guys. So we're going to subtract 5x from both sides because we want, I'm going to try and keep x positive. 1 equals 6x minus 5x is 1x. Solve for x by adding 1 to both sides, and we get that x equals 2. So the question says, so some of us just found x and stopped and forgot to finish the rest part. Find x and st. So we found out x, so now all we have to do is take st, st equals 6x minus 1, and plug in 2 for x. So 6 times 2 minus 1 equals 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. So to get full credit for this, you need to find out that x is 2 and that st is 11. Question 8 is a similar idea. There's actually a typo, but if you follow the, what they gave you, then you can still find the whole thing. So question 8 says find x and st if r is between s and t. So once again, same image, s, r, t, because r is between those. So it says r, s, s, r, r, s are the same thing, is 21, r, t, is 7x plus 17. Rs, once again, is 5x plus 1. So this time, they gave you two pieces of information for the same little bit. So to find x, we just have to know that these are both Rs, so they're equal to each other. So you would do 5x plus 1 equals 21 we have just solved for x. So we get 5x equals 21 minus 1 is 20. And that gives us x equals 4. Now the next part here is um, applying the knowledge that we know if we put sr and rt together, we will find the whole thing. So now in order to find the whole thing, which is st, we need to know what rt is. So rt equals 7x plus 17. So we're going to do 7 times 4 plus 17, which is 28 plus 17, which is 45. Now, we know that RT 
is 45, which means if we put SR and RT together, so we just know that if we add them together, we get the whole thing, SR plus RT equals ST. So we found out, or we know SR is 21, they gave us that in the beginning. RT is 45, so that means ST is 21 plus 45, which is 66. So in order to get full credit for this, you need to find out that X is 4 and ST is 66. All right, question 9. Find the distance and midpoint for KN. So I saw like some of us just throwing out random numbers. Some people were just saying they're confused. So the thing here is KN. Where is K? K is right here at negative 3. Where is N? N is right here at 3. The distance on the number line is big minus small. So our big number is N. So we're going to do 3 minus, small number is negative 3 negative 3. 3 minus negative 3 is 6. Our distance is 6. Midpoint. Add and divide by 2. So k plus n, negative 3 plus 3 divided by 2. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 2 or 0 divided by 2 is 0. Our midpoint is at 0. It's halfway between the two. 1, 2, 3 spaces to get from k to 0. 1, 2, 3 spaces to get from n to 0. Number 10 is just the ordered pair distance midpoint. So remember to label these x1, y1, x2, y2. You don't have to memorize the formulas. You can refer to your notes for your formulas. So distance formula is d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So I labeled these, so I'm going to plug them in. Square root of x2 is negative 4. It's negative 4 minus x1 is 0 squared. Plus y2 is 8 minus y1 is 5 squared. Negative 4 minus 0 is negative 4 squared, plus 8 minus 5 is 3 squared. Negative 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. Our distance is 5. Distance is always just single number, a unit. Midpoint, I'm going to do that over here. Midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. We're just adding and dividing. We started with ordered pairs. Our midpoint is a point. It is also going to be an ordered pair. So we're going to have x1 is 0 plus x2 is negative 4 divided by 2 y1 is 5 plus 8 divided by 2 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4 divided by 2 5 plus 8 is 13 divided by 2 negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 comma 13 divided by 2 is 6 and a half so the answer is the ordered pair, negative 2, 
All right, last one here. Find the coordinates of the missing endpoint given that P is 6, 3. Uh, P63 is the midpoint, so P is somewhere in between N and Q. So it's NPQ. P is 6, 3, and N is 5, 4. So we know the final answer for our midpoint and we know one of our points so let's call this x1 y1 and then q would be x2 y2 because those are the two endpoints so when we do our midpoint formula these are what sh we should plug in and this is what we should end up with so the midpoint formula is x1 plus y, uh, x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. So we know n, n is x1, so 5 plus we don't know Q is X2, so we'll just leave it as 5 plus X2 over 2. We know Y1, Y1 is 4, plus we don't know Y2. Now, we've plugged in everything we can. The problem is, we can't figure out an answer number when we have just 5 plus X2 divided by 2 or 4 plus y2 divided by 2, because we have variables in there still that we don't know. But we know that the answer should be the midpoint. The midpoint answer is 6, 3. 6 is the x value, which is going to come from 5 plus x2 divided by 2. So that means 6 is equal to 5 plus x2 divided by 2. 3 is the y value that we should get. And it's going to come from 4 plus y2 divided by 2. To solve these, we have to first get rid of that division by 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. 6 times 2 is 12. That's going to give us 5 plus x2. To solve for x2, our x value for q will subtract 5 from both sides. And we'll get that 7 equals x2. So that means q's x value is 7. And then same idea over here. we got to get rid of that division by 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So we have 6 equals 4 plus y2. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And we're going to get 2 equals y2. So that means our y value for q is 2. So the answer to this is the 0.7 comma 2. All right. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Um, if you have any questions on this, uh, I am going to put in the, the question thing so that if you guys have questions, I can reach out on anything that you might have been lost in. Hopefully this is helpful and gets you better uh, prepared to do your quiz.